Welcome to this latest update on the NowRail model railway control system. And today the big update is to do with the Loco controller, which now has the ability to update turnouts or other any other sort of accessory decoder. So let's have a look at this in action. Now, although turnouts are the main use for sort of accessory decoders, I'm also just going to show you a quick video of the automatic KD uncoupler running. Apologies for the uh, shaky video. It's quite hard holding the phone in the right place while also trying to press all the various buttons. So coming over to the workbench, one of the things about the controller is it's obviously part of the whole now rail control system. Now, just to let you know what's going on here, down here there is an ESP32 that is actually from one of my baseboards outside. It's actually got another friend just up here that's just out of camera shot. Uh, so these are, if you like, these would process the servos, do the servo control. I've then got my touchscreen controller. So this is sending out a signal that is picked up by the ESP32. This then sends back a signal to say that the turnout has been moved. And that's why these LEDs then change color. If this is removed, these don't change color because it never receives the return signal. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is this is all part of the now rail system. So if we now look at the latest version of the controller, the main changes are that the change loco button has been shrunk down and we now have the accessory command button. So clicking on the accessory command button, if I put in a value of 2002, if I now turn the accessory on, you will notice that this LED changes because it sent the command to this module. And in clicking the other way, you can see the LED moves backwards and forwards. So when this command is being sent out, not only does it send it to the baseboard, but also if you have any mimic panels that are receiving commands, if you like, in the correct way from now rail, they will automatically be updated by the hand controller. And this was important for me because what I didn't want was the ability for me to if you like, start to change settings with the hand controller that then didn't update this controller. Now, if you're interested in building your own controller, obviously this one is connected via a cable. This is my master one. This one that's running here is wireless. It has a battery inside. Well, let's be honest, they're all running without communication via the cables. The cables just produce the power. Uh, the 3D print files are available on Colts 3D. Just it's free download for the cases. And you can also download the PCB if you want to build your own controller or the old circuit diagrams are still available and you can build your own.
So all you need to do is click on that link below the video to the Now Rail page on the Digital Town site. And this is the Digital Town resource page that you will come across. So this is the latest uh, version and there's some little updates here just to say that 1.3.1 has been released. The way I'm trying to do the file systems for these things is that the 1.3, if you like, represents the uh, the latest version of NowRail. And then we've got the latest version of the controller, which is sort of the 2.1. So uh, it's a combination, this hand controller of the 1.3.1 and the 2.1 code for the controller. If you want to build your own, just scroll down to the touchscreen controller. You will now come across this section of the page which gives you the libraries and where to download them also the link for the screen that i use make sure that you get the correct screen i get these from aliexpress and you need the ili 9486 with the ft6236 uh, capacitive touchscreen driver Coming down then through the uh, instructions, you can obviously build all of this without the PCB. You know, my original one was just built uh, sort of a DIY system. These are some close ups of the screen so you can make sure that you are looking at ordering the correct one. And again, the circuit diagram, click on that if you want to uh, get a bigger version. There are the a link to the original case files. These are the case files that I built the DIY version in. Uh, they are set out slightly different uh, to make it easier to put a DIY case together. And then this is the PCB version of the case. As you can see, everything sort of clips together a little bit easier. Um, just going through the links here, you can see there is a battery holder position in the case if you want to add that in. Uh, you can download the PCB files and uh, what else have we got here? That's about it then. And then a link to the 3D print files. The other bit, of course, is you want the code. So coming up to the top, the project code is here. Just click to download and you will get the 1.3.1 hand controller to underscore one. Now, once you have the code downloaded, apart from changing your layout ID, unless you're going to leave the default in, there is nothing else that you need to do. Just compile this to an ESP32 dev module and that's it you've got your controller and it will run with the now rail system. Now, one thing about both the controller and the uh, the touchscreen controller here, I'm running these in conjunction with DCC EX. However, if you use the now rail connection system to uh, the NCE CAD bus, you can also send your accessory and loco controls directly to your NCE system. So the same controllers, the same code, it works on both systems. So that's about it for today's update. I've been so pleased with the way that the controllers have worked that I've actually ordered yet another screen. So I'm going to have three of these working together. And I think that will be enough for my small layout even when the grandkids are around to play. So that's it for today's update, only a short update. If you're interested in the uh, servo mounts for the turnouts or the KD couplers, I'll put a link below the video so you can see how to download those off the Colts 3D site. And uh, those are just 3D printed on a cheap Ender 3 printer, so it can be printed on anything. But I think that's it for the controller for now. What I hope to do with the now rail system is in future give some, if you like, more layout based tutorials on how I'm using it on my own layout. So that's it for today. Hope it's been useful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.